Yes. I think any words are superfluous. Thank you. Our next speaker needs no introduction. She is the most dangerous woman in Britain. She, she is also the First Minister of Scotland now and in the future. And, but I think we know her as our Nicola. Right, if I had known that I was going to speak from a dance floor this evening, right, I would have taken Joe's advice and decided that high heels weren't necessary. So if I go skating along this dance floor, at any point, please, somebody, Hamish, catch me. But let that scene out of Dirty Dancing. Do you want to try it? Right, you've got to stand up and I, I run and you catch me. Anne, has Hamish ever seen Dirty Dancing? He has, okay. Anyway, my, my shoes actually have become a bit of a thing. I was at uh, a St Andrews night event, an, an SNP fundraiser, in November last year, and a pair of my shoes were put up for auction. And somebody, somebody who obviously has more money than sense, paid the grand sum of four and a half thousand pounds for a pair of my shoes. And actually, the the organite, what was that, Liz? About fifty. <laughs> So the, the organizers were so kind of taken aback by this that they actually tried, I had these shoes on that night, they actually tried to persuade me to take them off and sell them as well before I went home. I said no, but if anybody here tonight wants to part with a four figure sum for my shoes, I will go home in my stocking soles. Okay? Size five. Your husband's there, I'm sure, but your shoes are much nicer. Actually, there's a, another burn supper happening in Dunoon tonight where another pair of my shoes are up for auction. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for a text to, to find out how much uh, they've raised. The shoes that are up for auction tonight are actually quite famous shoes because they're the shoes I wore in the second of the two general election leaders debate. You remember the one where me and Leanne and Natalie had a hug and kept Ed Miliband standing to one side. Well, that's the shoes. So I hope somebody pays a lot of money for these shoes because it broke my heart to part with them, I can tell you. Anyway, anyway, look, I've got the most difficult gig of the evening. I've got to follow tonight all of these absolutely amazing entertainers. And, you know, we have been blessed tonight with the entertainment we've had from... Dave Anderson doing the, the toast to the haggis, uh, then Josephine Sillers, that amazing voice. You know, the first time I ever set foot in this hotel, uh, you were probably here, Ricky, as were you, Marie. I was 18 years old, and I was here at a public meeting to hear Jim Sillers speak. And here I am, almost 30 years later, listening to the beautiful voice of his granddaughter sing Burns to us. So lovely <laughs> bit of symmetry there. And then, and then we had the, the amazing, I, I can't I actually find words to describe <laughs> Ian Robertson's rendition of Tam O'Shanta. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's the, the second time Second year in a row, I've heard Ian do that, and it is phenomenal. Without a shadow of a doubt, Ian, that is the best Tam O'Shanter I have ever heard, and it's the best Tam O'Shanter I ever will hear. And then, and then, of course, the, the toast to the lassies by the wonderful Colin McCready. 
Um, he said he was embarrassed being rude in front of me. I have to say, sitting there looking at you up there, you didn't look <laughs> embarrassed. <laughs> but when I heard when I heard Colin uh, tell us that Robert Burns said in some of his work that uh, women, uh, what was it? Women wanted nine inches. <laughs> nine inches will please a lady. It reminded me. It reminded me of one of the great fat of life. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> you know, as, as Joe said, women are generally superior to men in every way. Bar one. And I've got to concede to this. Men, when it comes, uh, women, when it comes to driving and parking cars, we're not as good at that as men. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. But there is a reason for it, ladies. And the reason is we have no sense of distance because we have spent our entire adult lives being reliably informed that that <laughs> is six inches. And so that's why we can't a car. Anyway, Colin, thank you very much. And Joe, what can I say about your reply on behalf of the lassies? As a lassie, I am very proud that you were replying on behalf of us this evening. Joe, Joe said that in order to find out when the first woman spoke at a burnt supper, she had to trawl the history of burnt suppers. I think we should make sure that Joe's speech here tonight gets added to the history of Burn Suppers. And I'm not, only, I'm not only proud as a woman to have listened to that reply on behalf of the lassies tonight, but I'm really proud that the first ever in the world, I don't know if it is, but we're going to claim it, transgender reply on behalf of the lassies took place here at an SNP Burn Supper in the south side of Glasgow. And then, if that all wasn't fantastic enough to have the immortal memory delivered by our national macker, uh, the wonderful, wonderful uh, Liz Lockhead. That was absolutely <laughs> stunning, Liz. And to be accompanied by the outstanding voices. I mean, one outstanding voice would have been amazing, but to have Tom... Uh, Ryan and Francis Singh was incredible and those were some of the most beautiful renditions of burn songs that I have ever heard. So basically, in short, after all of that, the last thing you want to do is listen to me. So I'm just going to sit down now. Because I've got, I've got the kind of boring bit this evening. I know you're having a really good time and you're kind of comfortable and you've probably had a few drinks and you're enjoying yourself and you're sitting back. It's my job to tell you that over the next few weeks, I want you to get off your backside and get out there and make sure the SNP win the election. <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been sitting up there uh, tonight next to the wonderful Hamish McPherson who has been an outstanding MC for the evening. He's not as old as he looks. But I've been sitting up there and I've been looking out and kind of marvelling to myself. I've been feeling a wee bit reflective recently because this year, I'm going to shock you guys, this year marks 30 years since I joined the SNP. Now, I know what you're all thinking. That's no bad for somebody who's still only 25. <laughs> but that's just one of life's little mysteries. But some of my, who, who's shouting me too? You're no 25. <laughs> but it's 30 years since I, I joined the SNP and if I'd cast my mind back 30 years, you know, we could have fitted an event like this into a telephone box, not to put too fine a point on it. And I often find myself thinking, you know, what was it 
that we did as a party that took us from where we were 30 years ago, 40, 50, 60 years ago, to where we are today. You know, I remember the first SNP meeting I went to, uh, and Marie and Ricky were there, and it was in the days when the Herald used to publish the, what was then called the System 3 Opinion Poll, and it was published every month without fail. And we had great jubilation at that meeting that night, because for the first time in Yonks, we'd gone into double figures <laughs> in the opinion polls. I think from memory, we were at 12%, and we were cock-a-hoop. How did we go from there to where we are today? Well, there's lots of things that got us from there to here. But there's two things in particular. And the two things that got us from there to here are the same two things that are going to get us from here to where we want to be, which is winning independence for our country. And let me, let me tell you what those two things were. Firstly, sheer bloody hard work, determination and perseverance. You know, before I got elected as the constituency MSP for this part of Glasgow, uh, I lost countless elections. In fact, I don't like to count them up because it's too depressing. And every single defeat, because we put our heart and souls into these elections, and there were people long before me losing the elections, I spoke to this gentleman here who stood as councillor for Ibrox in what year, sir? 79. Tilled the soil for me, and thank you for it. But we lost, and we lost, and we lost, and it was heartbreaking, it was devastating. But you know what? If somebody gave me the option right now to turn the clock back 20 years and not suffer any of these defeats, I wouldn't take them up on it. Because every one of these defeats taught us something and made us more determined and made us get out there and work harder and understand what we had to do to win. It was those defeats that made us the success we are today. So hard work, perseverance, determination was the first thing. The second thing was and is today that we have a vision. We know what it is we're doing this for. You know, I often think that the reason Labour are in the pretty dire state <laughs> that they are in today Stop crying, please. <laughs> the reason they're in the pretty dire state is it's partly because they started to take people for granted. They took people for granted for a long, long, long time. But secondly, I think it was because, and I am pretty sure that for the last goodness knows how many years, if you were to ask somebody in the Labour Party, what is it you're doing this for? What is it that drives you? What is it you believe in? They would have struggled to tell you. And you probably wouldn't get the same answer from any two of them. We're different. We stand for something. We believe in something. We're passionate about something. We want Scotland to be independent. And we want always to do the best for this country. That's what unites us. It's what drives us. It's what motivates us. So that hard work and drive and that belief in an ideal, in a principle, those are the two things that got us from there where we were 30 years ago to where we are today as the government of Scotland within a hair's breadth of taking this country to independence. And it's those, those two things that will take us the next stage of the journey as well. Hard work being the first one. You know, the, the polls all say we've got the election sewn up. Don't believe the polls. Don't take anything for granted. No election is ever in the bag until the votes are cast. Uh, one of the sayings of, of Robert Burns, I'll get this wrong, but he said something like, the, uh, the, there's no such uncertainty as a sure thing. And given that it's Burns season, that's a, a good line to, to cite. We can't take anything for granted and we shouldn't take anything for granted. We need to get out there and we need to persuade people. We need to listen to people. We need to work as hard as we did all these years ago when nobody gave us a chance in any election. And secondly, we've got to keep doing what it is we believe in. Being a good government. Do you know what? Whatever the papers say, whatever the opposition say, I'm damn proud of the SNP's record in government over these past few years. We've made, we've 
we've made this country a better place, our health service is better, our education system is better, and you know what? More than any of that, this is a prouder, more confident country because we trusted the country to decide its own future. But we've got to keep doing that. If we win as we are determined to do a third term in government, then we've got to keep taking the country forward. We've got to keep making sure that we equip this country for the challenges that lie ahead, make our health service even better, make sure that our education system is there for every young person, no matter their background. And we've got to keep standing up for this country against what Westminster is doing day in and day out. It is wrong that Westminster still holds so much power over decisions that shape our life. Do you know, just before, just before Christmas, I sat in my office. I'm the first minister of Scotland. It was the day of the, the budget, the autumn statement. I'm the first minister of Scotland, and I had to sit in my office and watch on television a politician 600 miles away tell me how much money my government was going to have to spend on the things we hold dear. That is not the best way to govern a country. We should be in charge of those decisions. And of course, that day, as he has in every budget since he's been Chancellor, he cut Scotland's budget. And he did it at a time when him and his government over the next few months, possibly even the next few weeks, are going to try to get the House of Commons to vote to renew the Trident nuclear system on the Clyde. Well, I say, we say, not in our name. And I say, I'll say this, I'll say this to Labour as well. You better get your act together because that decision on Trident is coming soon and you have to decide what side you are on because people will not forgive you if you sit on the fence the way you are doing far too often right now. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to be that good government we've been. We've got to keep standing up for Scotland and yes, we've got to keep arguing the case for Scotland to be independent. You know, every single media interview I do right now, I get asked many questions, but I get asked two questions in particular. Do you think there's going to be another referendum? <laughs> and secondly, when is there going to be another referendum? Well, in answer to the first question, do I think there's going to be another referendum? Yes, I do. And, and I think when, when there is, Scotland will vote yes next time round. In answer to the second question, when's it going to be? I don't know yet. Because you know what? Before we talk about when it is, we've got to make sure we get out there and persuade people that whenever it is, they are going to vote yes. So that's what we've got to do over these next few years. Keep this country moving forward. Keep providing the good government that we've provided. Keep being a voice against the austerity and the obsession with nuclear weapons from Westminster and keep arguing that case for our country to be independent or as I prefer to call it, normal like any other country in the world. So let's, let's get out there and do it. We've had a great night tonight. Thank you for all the money you've raised to help my campaign. I'm deeply grateful and remember the offer for the shoe still stands but we can haggle <laughs> later on but thank you for being here please get out with us on the campaign trail to make sure we win that historic third term in government and we keep this country firmly on the right track thank you all very much <laughs>